And if everyone could just press continue, please. All right, this is week four in the final week of Elevating Consciousness with Dr. Chakalingam. Thank you so much for doing this session with us and feel free to get started. Once again, thanks so much to Jennifer Payton uh, Walker to help get this uh, series ongoing. So it's uh, my pleasure to be discussing with our wonderful group, both from the US, India, and other places about self uh, inquiry, Siddha consciousness. And uh, today we'll uh, finish off with a discussion on how you, humans are going to interact with uh, uh, general artificial intelligence once AI becomes self-conscious. That's what we're going to try and cover today. So before we start off, uh, if anyone wishes to uh, unmute yourself, we have another five minutes while we wait for others to come on board. If you have any ideas about what is uh, things that might be working for you, what you're learning here in these last four Mondays, what could have been better so that next time around we can make it even more useful for our friends. Any suggestions, critique, comments, any quick thoughts, anything is welcome. And like I said earlier, feel free to either unmute yourself to make a comment or put it in the chat. Hello, Dr. Chakalingam. Yes, sir. How are you doing? I am, I am well. Thank you, sir. Can you hear me okay? Yes. I think the last time I tried to make comments, uh, for some reason, my audio was messed up. So uh, my wife and I were unable to attend the last time, but we watched the recording yesterday. And I noticed there were a lot of people that talked about uh, intermittent fasting. And I just wanted to share my experience with that. Um, I had gained a lot of weight in the past uh, due to a, a personal tragedy and grief that I went through, and I put on a lot of weight. Finally, this uh, January 1, I decided to kind of turn that around, and I started dieting. And uh, I was having some success with it, but uh, I was still struggling with the dieting. And uh, my daughter-in-law is an obesity uh, specialist physician. And she got me started on uh, intermittent fasting. And what I started doing is I, I eat lunch and then I eat dinner by six o'clock or so. And I don't eat again until lunch the next day. And I've been doing that since February and I've lost 54 pounds doing that. So. And exercising. Yeah. yeah and I exercise as well. And at first it was difficult, but now I, I really don't think that much of it. I mean, you know, in the mornings, I'm really not that hungry. I drink one cup of black coffee and that's it. And, you know, I get up in the morning and we walk, we meditate, we do things like that. So my mind is occupied. I really don't think about it a lot. Uh, and it's very, very successful for me. And, and I think uh, it also gives me more energy. And I just, of course, taking weight off helps too. But uh, I wanted to share, share that. It's been very successful for me. Congratulations on two counts. One, in successfully losing so much weight. And even more, I am proud of the future. There are certain things you mentioned in the last two minutes. One is I am more energetic. I feel that I can do better. And that confidence we are able to sense. And I feel there is no reason why you will gain back any of that weight you have lost. If you look at most weight loss programs, for six months to one year under supervision, when we do a clinical trial, people lose five to 7% of their weight. Wow. And after one year, two years, most are in fact, all that weight comes back. So at the end of two years, we are back where we started. But when you do this type of uh, little bit of self-inquiry, a little bit of uh, connecting with gratitude, that positive mindset, I think this uh, cements the process and makes it so much more uh, transformative from within. And that is what we are hoping that uh, will stay with you all lifelong. I and not only for you, it will inspire your family as well. 
Yes, sir. Go ahead. I've actually shifted my thinking a little bit because at first I was wanting to lose weight, but now I don't think of it as losing weight, even though I still am gradually. I think of it as a lifestyle choice and that it helps me to be healthy, you know, exercise and fasting and I'm healthier. So I think I can sustain this, whereas most uh, very rigid diets are difficult to sustain. This is sustainable. So, Sustainability is very important. Another thing that we see in many of our heart patients is we don't measure exact calorie count. Have you been checking every day in the last six months how many calories are going in? No. See, it's not needed. That's what I've seen in the last five years. So many successes without any specific mathematical uh, involved uh, calorie counting. So that also makes it so intuitive and natural. Yes. And I'm it so happy easy. about your story and I'm sure it's going to inspire many, many people moving forward when you come and share it in groups like this. Okay. Well, and the interesting thing is um, I, I, I have other stomach issues and I don't do well if I don't eat with my coffee, but I just stopped when we would eat dinner. So I ate breakfast and lunch and dinner but then I stopped eating after dinner and I've lost between eight and 10 pounds in the last five months, just, just by not eating after dinner. And before I had been trying to lose weight and I hadn't. So it's really interesting how just the um, decreasing that window of eating. Anyway. Excellent. Excellent. And uh, are you hungry for uh, any particular minutes or even hours in a, in any given day or most days on average? I, am. I mean, it does take some discipline. Uh, sometimes I go to bed hungry, but it's okay. And, you know, I, I, I don't dwell on it. I have a cup of herbal tea in the evening, you know, with no calories, uh, but which is better than a glass of wine that I used to have. <laughs> uh, and in the mornings, though, I'm hungry some, but I exercise. So once you start exercising, once you go for a walk and you meditate, you 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 don't think about it. You don't dwell so, on it. This is more than a lifestyle. This is like a meditation itself, the entire thing that you're doing for months on end. When you go to bed hungry, that is meditation. And you said it's okay to go to bed hungry. That's a beautiful way of accepting mm -hmm. it. And then in the morning when you exercise, sympathetic activity goes up the counter-regulatory hormones in the body kick in to produce enough energy from the fat stores. So that's what keeps you through the exercise. And after the exercise, I would suggest that you have your brunch within an hour so that the body can use the protein that you consume to build muscle. That's, that's basically so After the I'm exercise, doing. don't wait too much longer. Oh, he doesn't. I, I exercise <laughs> at about 11 o'clock in the morning and then I eat lunch at 12. So, And I usually go about 17 hours a day without eating. It's amazing your uh, story and not only your success, but the perception that you have that it is okay to be hungry. I feel that is the centerpiece of our uh, hunger, gratitude experience and self-inquiry that we encourage everybody to find for themselves. See, all these words that we use in English language or Tamil language, all that is words. But the experience is a thousand times more profound when we do it for ourselves. So that is what we are inviting you to find for yourself. Dr. Chakalingam, I'd like to direct you to the chats, please. You have uh, at least three or four um, comments that were typed in. Do you mind reading them for us? They're kind of longer. Um, do you want me to, uh, do you want to open them and just let me know if you want me to? So I'm looking them? at the comments. After the yeah. talk about needing to Oh, I'm happy more. to read them. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and read them if you would like me to. Sure. I, sorry, I just wanted to make sure you saw them and wanted me to handle all three. Georgia Lynn says, after the talk about needing to do more physical activities, I've added water aerobics and Zumba classes along with my dance classes. I love it and I do feel better. So yeah, fasting is, I feel, the best way to start off towards holistic health, connecting deeper, finding that empowerment, finding flow, all that can be done even with so many medical comorbidities. Uh, being hungry is okay. That's the real message. And if we can learn that message out of our smile, out of our gratitude, that's the best way to start. And then after a few weeks, few months, we have to realize our muscle and bone strength and our physical fitness comes from exercise. Most of us have enough nutrition intake and in our body reserves in the form of fat, which we can convert to good uh, 
muscle and uh, strength for that we need exercise so exercise is definitely part of uh, good fitness but uh, first second and third steps are connecting with the mind finding that fun and then fasting maybe or calorie restriction followed by exercise all this will happen more intuitively it will happen without us having just like today morning we heard we don't need to count calories to lose a 50 pounds within 6 months i'm also saying you don't need to have a fitbit or other devices to measure number of steps or number of kilometers or miles you have walked all that will also happen intuitively to the point once we connect deeper we won't have a reason to walk we will be running life is so fun that is what we teach and inspire and want you to explore within yourself next one sir can i share my video? yes gary said um sometimes when fasting i have a slight headache which is stopped if i take a few bites of apple or other food i try to be sure i stay hydrated and additional water doesn't affect the headache please share any thoughts on how to manage my headache without breaking fast thank you smiling is the main deal if an apple helps you smile through the fast i have no problem with that but when we say fast if no calorie goes in we have a better chance of entering into deeper states of uh, nutritional ketosis metabolic switching where the body's fat reserves that is the bank we can go to it and withdraw the uh, reserve energy for that ideal circumstances when we are relaxed that's why we insist on smiling and adequate hydration there are some religious fast where people don't drink water they don't even try to swallow their own saliva so all that i don't know if there is any science but what as cardiologist i would recommend is that uh, you do the fast with water and uh, relaxing and smiling and things like that but if a little bit of tea a little bit of coffee some people like uh, lime juice a little bit of fruits i think is really fine for me first 3 months i had trouble when i tried the 24 hour fasting in 2018 now i can i still feel tired once i go into ketosis a little bit but headaches i don't have if i have adequate water i am really fine but it may not be true for everybody everybody's body is a little different so listen to your body figure out what you can do and little bit of fruits is really not going to affect it you'll still enter into a very good state of ketosis and if you want to measure all that we can check like blood glucose you can check a finger prick for uh, ketone levels we have not requested any of our patients to do it in the last 5 years but there are tools available if you want to measure how much ketosis you are entering next one all right the next comment says i am trying only two meals a day feel being hungry but i'm losing weight and i do not need to lose weight i am eating as much as i can eat at one time what should i this is the opposite of what i deal with day to day i am a cardiologist taking care of heart patients and unfortunately in the us majority of heart patients have weight as a issue excess weight so for them this works easier what about people who are normal weight some people are low weight and they need to add weight for them fasting may not be a good thing to start off but if you feel two meals is good for you and you are having good energy by having a food free interval and you want that benefit you'll have to really ensure in those two meals that uh, you are matching your calorie requirement you may have to consult with a nutritionist your primary care doctor just to figure out uh, how much calories you need because some people are really muscular bmi itself is not the best indicator our own uh, rehab uh, uh, home rehab coordinator at our va he's probably joined us but he doesn't have video to share but uh, he's a hyper athlete his bmi is in the 30s so bmi itself may not be the best measure of fat but uh, if you are low weight or if you have low levels of fat reserves in the body and you don't want to lose any more weight you have to be really careful when you try to do intermittent fasting because fasting at the end of the day is a hypo caloric diet you'd get lesser calories than most other people so unless you make extremely conscious effort to get more calories in this may not work for you yet i hope i answered it all right and the next question says I would like your view on taking small frequent meals, drinks or snacks 
healthy ones as a method of satisfying your body and mind at the same time. A lot of things that uh, I encourage pa uh, patients and friends and even children to do, I believe is from our understanding of our evolution. Our close uh, relatives, you could say, are the chimpanzees. And they eat for eight hours in a day. They have 50 fruits every day. So basically, they're spending several hours engaged in the active process of eating. If we spend time like our uh, friends, we won't have time to study, go to school, be productive at work. That's why over the last 10,000 years, we have focused so much on specialization so that we can become evolved into uh, whatever field that we want to pursue. That comes from the time that our ancestors gave towards eating. So that's the challenge. If you eat a healthy, plant-based, nutritious diet, very soon you'll feel hungry. That is the reality. Uh, so it is okay to have six meals a day as long as we uh, eat the right things. See, for instance, if you have carrots or if you have spinach or broccoli, how many servings can you have that will make us obese? I don't think whatever servings we have, we will ever become obese. So that's the thing. We can remain healthy by eating more meals. And especially for people who are athletic, we see some hyper athletes, people who do marathon plus run uh, uh, plus bike 100 miles and then swim triathletes and extreme athletes and uh, tennis world champions like Djokovic who are more on plant-based diets. We, that's what we are hearing. They avoid gluten, avoid inflammatory components in their diet. I'm sure they have to eat plenty, several meals in a day just to get enough nutrition for their requirements. So all these things that we try to encourage people to do time-restricted eating, fasting, is to get a deeper mind-body connection. Once that is established, once your weight is where you want it to be, then you can figure out if I'll be more energetic, more uh, productive, with more frequent servings of healthy, nutritious things. We generally avoid the word snack. We want people to focus on using that time to eat meals when they can add the fruits, vegetables, uh, nuts, everything in that meal itself. But once you reach your ideal weight, then you can have six meals, eight meals, especially if you're running and exercising and uh, trying to be athletically more uh, uh, okay, productive. Okay. Any other quick questions, suggestions? There are no more in the chat, Dr. Chakalingam. And just FYI, Peyton's experiencing some uh, connectivity issues. Uh -huh. So I'll be watching Super. to help out. I know Tiaga, my friend, has joined us from Coimbatore. He has been working in artificial intelligence for all his life. I don't know if he has a chance to unmute himself, say hello to our group. We can't hear you yet, Tiaga. I met Tiaga in Pittsburgh in the 1990s, and I was a resident. He told me, Anand, you don't have to be a resident and go to cardiology fellowship and uh, be a doctor just because you signed up for it. You have to find it within yourself. That's what he told me in the 1990s. Nobody had talked to me like that before, and even after that, in the last 25 years, nobody inspires me to look within like Tiaga does. He's an engineer by profession. He went to Australia to learn AI and he worked in the US for a long time. And he's now helping us maintain that website, High Life Journey. So welcome, Tiaga, to share some of your thoughts before we go to the slideshow. You're still muted. There was one comment that came in. Peyton, I think you're back. And why don't we see if your audio is good and you can read that comment. Yes, the next comment that we have says, fasting is not only about limiting caloric intake, there is also value in being hungry. Thanks so much for uh, sharing that, Yogesh. Value in being hungry uh, uh, comes with gratitude, keeps us in the moment. So this is what we teach. And 80-year-old uh, heart patients to find it within themselves. And thanks for sharing that as your own experience. Thank you, Yogesh. Tiaga, are you able to talk or? Are you able to talk? Hello? Can, can you it's, hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, hello? Hello? We can hear you fine. Okay, great. Now I switch to headphones. Okay. 
so i uh, i started my uh, a career in 94 actually this in the beginning stages um, not much was implemented only big organizations like nasa was doing lot of research in ai so i got very interested in ai that's why i i came to australia and uh, did my research in ai uh, it was in the field of uh, prediction um, so uh, i i did a paper and we proved that uh, neural networks can do uh, better prediction than the statistical methods that was being used at that point of time so we had a prediction accuracy rate of 93% uh, that was pretty good for that point of time now ai has grown a lot uh, now you know we can talk to a computer we can talk to the phone virtual you know virtually you can have an assistant and do lot of things just by telling your assistant to do things so at that point of time i would say that uh, the main obstacle was uh, the computing power we didn't have much of computing power at that point of time uh, only you know big organizations uh, had super computers and parallel computing so that was one of the big bottlenecks to process this because when you see something your brain process you know uh, at a very high speed and uh, the computers were not able to match at that point of time it was processing you know pixel by pixel or you know you can simulate neurons but the processing power that is required to match human beings was uh, not possible at that point of time now now even the apple phones in the bionic chips can do uh, process that kind of uh, speed and has the a power uh, to process you know the uh, uh, pattern matching or uh, voice recognition and all that so we have a lot of power at hand but still the development in a in terms of uh, algorithms or the way it works uh, not a big difference uh, because whatever we know how the brain works uh, that is still that's the same thing that we are using and there are a lot of research is still going on about you know how uh, how we behave how the human brain process things and uh, emotions and all that that is still happening a long way to go and to understand you know how we behave how our brain works at a particular point of time how we make decisions and uh, what are the other things that we are taking into account to make decisions that plays a big role and and it's still uh, you know the research is still happening so but the progress is very fast nowadays um, the information is shared instantaneously and uh, because of uh, you know the computing power and the parallel processing potentials that we are able to achieve a lot more now we are talking about you know the cars can communicate with each other and avoid uh, accidents that that kind of uh, you know a potential that we are able to achieve now but how to be like a human that is still a question there is a lot of debate happening whether it can be achieved cannot be achieved that is still a question uh, so brain you are actually using your brain to explore your brain so that possibly you know that could be a limitation and uh, there is lot of things to learn in this world and uh, the time and you know the accessibility and the possibility is limited for a human brain but if it becomes an artificial brain the amount of learning uh the time it can take to learn all those can be compressed and it can learn a lot that would be a huge difference between comparing with the human beings uh so you know it can read so many books it can have so much of knowledge 
that is possible and human beings brain has i don't know what is the limitation but uh, you know it has a limited size and it could be a potentially a limited number of neurons or the connections that could limit but when it comes to artificial intelligence you know uh, artificially you can create billions of supercomputers and connect and make it learn so that would be you know big difference compared to what human beings can do and what artificial intelligence can achieve at this point of time so it is still you know uh, it's open for discussion and uh, there is a lot of research happening so i i would be very interested to hear uh, what anand can say uh, about artificial intelligence in really in terms of you know a lot of things that he is already doing how to improve or uh, improve human beings life and health happiness in that way i like to hear you know what how artificial intelligence can help and uh, make us better human beings thank you anand for the opportunity thanks tyaga so much for your uh, valuable insights so i'm just showing you my iphone they say these uh, cell phones are smarter than the best computer than the best computers that we had to go to the moon a few years ago <laughs> so that's what uh, yeah. science has evolved so our technology is in everybody's hands now so thanks so much tyaga let's uh, have uh, those two questions we'll yes, see what we our group thinks and then we'll start with the slide set all right great and we also while i launch that we have a comment in question that says i sleep 1 hour extra at nights when i fast how do you explain this scientifically so we have not yet done the rigorous studies for me being a cardiologist i try to not skip dinner because i was afraid of going to sleep hungry and missing out on sleep but now i'm hearing so many of my own friends and patients telling me anand it's easier for me to actually skip dinner it's okay and actually i'm better off more fresh if i go to bed little hungry that's what many people are telling me and i've tried it a few times it works for me also but we haven't done the studies to say because the number of hours is a metric of quality of sleep just like that the depth is another thing and there are different phases in the sleep nrem rem sleep so there are so many things we want to study so in the next 3 to 4 years hopefully we will have a case control evaluation of sleep quantity and quality both with the regular eating patterns and with the going to bed hungry but for the time being if you're fresh every day of the week that is the most important thing if you have enough energy to keep smiling and be grateful and move through life that means that you've done something right the day before so if going to bed hungry works for you you try it otherwise you can have little earlier dinner and then try to postpone breakfast by a little bit the next day so try to see which works for you okay anand i am dr chokalingam tyaga nice to see you tyaga can you unmute and then reply one question i really happy to see i want to think about artificial intelligence my perception is what you have been thinking that is not possible it is becoming possible what it was not yesterday today it is possible so ai we are feeling tomorrow it may be possible my feeling is uh, uh, tagga nanan and to my friends whenever if we can have an organ transplantation for example if i'm successful in transplanting my heart now you are doing thousands of patients kidney more than that any organ if i going to transplant it and if i going to be successful you know everything about the organ fortunately and fortunately as and today you are not able to transplant the brain the moment if you are going to successful in transplanting a human brain to another brain that will be where you will know everything about artificial brain and artificial intelligence otherwise till then all the things will be going on the science but i am very confident soon you are going to get a artificial brain transplantation it is maybe possible first is organ transplantation of the brain and then how we are going to evaluate the artificial brain and how we are going to be successful that day will be a complete science for your artificial brain and artificial intelligence 
That is what I feel when I am hearing from both of you. What is your comment, Tiger? Uh, uncle, that is uh, more of a medical question. How we can translate uh, uh, transplant brain? Because the brain actually um, controls the entire body, uh, giving the signals, and it it's a back propagation algorithm basically. it takes input from various parts of the body and then accordingly it fine tunes itself so when you change the brain it, first of all we need to make the connectivity i am not sure medically how that is possible uh, to connect to the you know the spinal cord and communicate to all all the organs and uh, it has to again come back and a lot of brain has to adapt to that body i would think and 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 it is possible if if uh, that can be possible you know uh, a brain can be uh, transplanted and connected to the body and connect to the spinal cord and it can communicate to the body then it it may work so that's that that's what i'm saying it's it's more of a medical question so i would uh, probably uh, ask anand to answer that question very nice discussion thanks for joining dad what i feel is uh, we are looking at a narrow aspect of the brain which is motor function so if i need to pick up this cell phone from that side for that i'm giving a command to my hand to go and pick it up that might be possible and it's going to be improved with the ai brain interfaces that are being developed currently and another thing is learning that tyaga suggested how much uh, uh, mathematical or uh, Uh, theoretical material we can accumulate in our brain all that may be augmented instead of uh, uh, the memory and hard drive being outside we may be able to enhance it with the uh, ai chips in our own brain all these things may happen but the volition the consciousness who am i how am i celebrating life that sort of uh, deep inner emotions values i don't know if uh, ai is going to replace it so we'll talk about it some more in the slides that i have very nice discussion so far um can we have the two questions quickly patent yes so we invite our friends to answer these two questions before we move on Dr. Chakalingam, while people are answering the poll, we do have a couple questions and comments in the chat. If you want me to read those, or we can wait until after your PowerPoint. Yeah, let's finish them also. I can look at it real fast because you had some mic issues. A uh, hug and a smile, right? That's the one. No, no, there is one more above that. i sleep one hour oh yeah that we answered a hug and a big smile help the sick and suffering so much can ai do those <laughs> so that's what we talked about the logical uh, motor function and uh, cognitive function we might but the human connectivity that is the much more challenging aspects which we don't know whether ai may ever get to that point that's what i also feel being in ai for the last 25 years excellent question um next is uh, uh i drink green chai tea with fresh lime juice lime juice with some salt and water salty lemonade and sometimes turmeric black pepper and lime juice in hot water and of course plain water during uh, fasting window writing this to help those who are fasting thanks so much archana she is uh, uh, been doing this for several 
months now and uh, she is herself a physician so when she says these things work i'm sure it will help many people so she is mixing uh, lime juice with chai and little bit of salt black pepper and turmeric thanks so much when do you yeah i just wrote that so that you know sometimes people kind of just plain water they want something different so then those are just some options that are healthy also i think thanks so much archana sure. when uh, do when you do a brain transplant you are actually doing a body transplant brain transplant has been done in animals okay i wasn't aware that it was been already accomplished in animals so we have to read up some more on that excellent thanks for that so can we close the poll and go yes, on to the I slide can, set yeah i can close the poll would you like me to share the results as well i have it as a slide already roughly oh, okay great So now I'm going to try and uh, share the slides for today. Is the slide full screen now? Yes, it looks good. Excellent. So welcome friends to our discussion on artificial intelligence and the human destiny. How self inquiry will interact with artificial intelligence as it surpasses human abilities my disclosures are high life's journey which is our non profit self help tool hoping to improve cardiac health and resilience using self inquiry seeking hunger is a book encouraging self inquiry towards holistic health and i'm an advisor for cardiac wellness institute in chennai so this is the series that uh, we are completing today for the first time i am taking up a course through osher to understand and uh, see what tools are available to elevate consciousness by which we mean finding happiness in life june 7th was understanding the basics of consciousness 14th was what makes us human how do we differ from other life forms june 21st we discussed our uh, heartful living tools that have worked for so many heart patients how we can use intuitive uh, self inquiry mind body methods to gain better understanding of who we are today we will touch upon the interaction between ai and humans i want to start off with a talk not that i gave this but it is given the chief uh, the guest lecture was given by dr anuradha who is here with us today and she shared this proudly with me over the weekend the topic is mindful eating and she gives me credit for the mindfulness lecture that she gave why i share this is anand is going to be here only for some more years just like that for the last 5000 years whoever has talked about self inquiry mindfulness siddha consciousness most of them have gone on like that the message can be eternal i'm so proud and i congratulate anuradha for not only trying our methods exploring within and finding there is value for it and now taking it upon herself to educate 300 medical students in self inquiry thanks for joining us today today's objectives are siddha what are the fundamentals self inquiry how simple it can be and what is this finish line we are talking about when are we going to reach there artificial intelligence the real potential alexander the great conquered the entire known world and then he landed on the shores of india the mountains i should say he encountered a yogi a siddhar and when he met him alexander was angry that he is not ge getting the type of respect and uh, appreciation that he has been used to throughout the rest of the world he said do you know who i am and uh, uh, siddhar said i don't think even you know who you are so that is self inquiry this is a excellent uh, read uh, this book lucifer principle i probably read about 10 years ago it shook my understanding of human beings of animals of nature itself because in this book they give 100 examples where nature is cruel 
it is trying to compete and overcome uh, just to survive against all odds there is no right or wrong it's just trying to survive that is what is nature so that is what is described in this uh, book the lucifer principle i invite you to read it to understand that there is so much struggle just to survive that is part of who we are that is part of our identity but also on the same vein i want you to look at this couple of words competing versus cooperating and there is psychology work being done with the help of archaeological evidence of human evolution over 200000 years of human evolution they have evaluated human behavior of both competition violence brutality along at the same time with cooperation so what i am trying to say here is we there is struggle in life but there is hope already in the last 200 years that we have been 200000 years that we have been humans there has all along been evidence for cooperation for success for celebration in our archaeological evidence that human beings have thrived through cooperation as well so we ask this question ai will get consciousness majority felt unlikely two thirds ai will hurt humans nearly half our community feels that is a real possibility so it may threaten our way of life once it evolves some more the first question i had was will ai become smarter than humans i didn't put that question in the end because it looks like many things that we ask ai to do it is already doing better than us so that question of smartness may already we may not be able to compete with the computer already i don't know how many of our friends today know salman khan but he is so famous because he actually just like alexander the great conquered the world through violence through force salman khan has made education universally free there is no further description of equality than the work he has done for him this did not start as a mission or a calling or a purpose in life it started as a hobby khan academy is my hobby keeping me sane so he was just doing it on the side to help his i think his nephews and his method of teaching became so useful so intuitive that he has made free all along in the last 10 20 years now from kindergarten through high school children can get education anywhere in the world if they have access to a computer for free that's how he has made this so this is a, i believe a beautiful example where the same human beings 2000 years ago they were called great because they conquered the world now greatness is measured in different terms so my training my entire life has been taken up by being a cardiologist and here i believe we can really add productive years and lifespan to my heart patients but when we embrace holistic methods we can improve not only life but also health span which means quality of life if people have the luxury of taking up sports dance martial arts like kung fu when they are younger and healthy obviously this is possible people can definitely improve their health span throughout lifetime and at the same time improve creativity how in how much we enjoy how alive we feel in the moment all that goes up when we engage in these holistic mind body methods what about zen and mindfulness tools they are meant to improve our creativity and directly they are able to work towards our uh, enlightenment or bliss or uvagai we say in siddha consciousness which means extreme happiness so all this is possible through mindfulness but again if somebody is having heart issues we don't talk about these things routinely when we talk about positive psychology how we can not only look at our stress and anxiety but look at our positive aspects of our mind our goodness our kindness our happiness whatever positive aspects in our mind we can improve our productivity and creativity what about yoga if we are born in india born as a hindu then it can go all the way towards enlightenment that's what the vedas are talking about but even otherwise just the postures and uh, uh, simple lifestyle that yoga teaches we can improve our productivity health span and creativity 
the Siddha consciousness that we've been teaching here at MU and our uh, VA through the whole health program now continuously since 2015, I believe checks all these boxes because it is intuitive and because it is done in the patient's own home at their own luxury. There's no strict dietary guideline. There is no calorie counting, no food, 3000 steps, 10,000 steps to be had every day, no Fitbit criteria to match. People are still able to transform from within despite their limitations and gain not only better years, but I believe deeper consciousness and awareness and celebration and uvagai and bliss through Siddha self-inquiry over the last five years. So this is very similar to yoga. Only thing, it does not even require any belief in any particular religion. It is very similar to, I initially taught this program thinking it is Zen, but now I realize even Zen comes from a Tamil Siddha tradition. So that's why I'm able to confidently say all that we have done in the last five years uh, originates from the 5,000 year tradition of Siddha consciousness. And how do we break through the logical mind, break through the barrier and find our true energy? Mindfulness helps us, meditation, gratitude, connection, finding that energy to connect with love and creativity, engaging in sports. Any age we see people are connecting with their body through that. Finding flow, not only in exercise, but also in other creative aspects. Fasting is a simple tool that many, many of our heart patients, despite physical limitations, are engaging in. Hikigai is uh, waking up and finding a reason to get out of the bed in the morning. So the purpose in life, meaning in life, that's what Hikigai is. And we discussed that last time. Silence is very simple and it can be at the mind level when we sit quietly without talking for an hour or just sitting for 10 minutes without a cell phone or other distractions. For the body level, fasting, I believe, is a way of entering into silence. So many things we are uh, encouraging and uh, exploring through these uh, Heartful Living Clinics. So this is a very nice book that was uh, written about tennis, how to win in tennis. But this book became famous not among tennis players, but among everybody who wanted to understand themselves because this book talks about self one and self two. The key to better tennis or better anything lies in improving the relationship between the conscious self one and the natural abilities of self two. The player of the inner game comes to value the art of relaxed concentration above all other skills. He discovers a true bliss for self. Uh, he discovers a true basis for self-confidence. So this is talking about flow and uh, subconscious energy that through tennis people can achieve. So I invite you to read the simple book, even if you don't plan to go on the tennis court ever. So this is what we've been discussing, how the conscious self is only 10%. At the subconscious level, 90% of our potential lies. So when I say this, here, there is, I think, 20 bits of information every second our body can process, or maybe 100 bits of information, I forget that number, but the subconscious can process a million bits of information. So we want to definitely harness the core, the heart of the subconscious, for that we use the mnemonic H for humility, E for empathy, A for aspiration and goals, and R for reciprocating with others, giving them the benefit out of all of that builds the core, the T, which is the trust in our friends, our family, ultimately trust in ourselves that we are moving in the right direction. So that is the subconscious potential. Earlier, we had this discussion about transplanting the brain. But what I feel is at the subconscious level, when we engage, our consciousness is not just the logical thought, I am Anand, I'm a cardiologist in Missouri. No, it's also at the subconscious level that involves my body every organ. I was asking the question, does the heart really feel? We are not sure because if I have a heart transplant, I can still come and have the same conversation with you. So that heart that we say has a feeling. It applies to the stomach. It applies to even the nail and the hair. Everything has some connection with our uh, the continuum that we say is consciousness. So to engage that depth of consciousness, I invite everybody to connect with their mind, but equally with their body also. So that core connects us with our gratitude. Measure your day's energy through your gratitude and connect directly with your 
creativity everything that you do simply uh, doing dishes or cleaning home we can do so creatively and with gratitude that's what we end up saying so this is the heart of consciousness building trust in our own experience of life itself through smiling 20 times every hour and gratitude for every aspect of life and this is maslow's hierarchy we have discussed this need for uh, water and food and then uh, shelter and uh, belonging to friends and family and then our academic achievements and then working towards uh, full potential and then the transcendence is uh, something which i feel is a direct aspect of self inquiry this is not directly me- mentioned in maslow's hierarchy but maslow himself came across several examples of this and wanted to write about it towards the end of his life so now we look at self inquiry along the same lines definitely i feel the starting point the foundation is gratitude every other way you do this math it's going to be challenging when you start with gratitude when you start feeling connected with what we have today then we can move forward in the inner journey then this empty stomach i feel is such a useful tool to journey forward if you have to hike 50 miles we make sure we have a good nutritious meal but like that if you want to journey inwards start with the empty stomach today morning i'm grateful so much to so many people who shared that they have tried to and successfully lost so much weight and they are connecting with being hungry and that too that they can go to bed at night it's okay to go to bed at night hungry that's what we heard a few minutes ago and then uh, connecting with your heart is measuring the amount of trust you have in people around you that nobody needs to tell us it's like blood pressure you measure and you know how healthy your heart is like that when you say you can trust everything around you that means that you are connected at the subconscious level and flow we measure through sports and we did this last week silence we encourage you to do a few minutes 5 10 minutes of uh, silence every day and doing altruistic acts of kindness will directly build this and gain meaning and this self inquiry is a positive feedback that only builds more gratitude engages in better health and more connectivity with the people around us and the world that we inhabit this is a concept we might have talked about real briefly but emotional craving is something we all want to avoid habitual eating is eating by the clock even this may not be the healthiest thing when we are really hungry that is when the food gains the respect that it is due to it that's when we are really supposed to eat people ask me is it okay to have six meals a day i'm saying it's okay to have even 10 meals of what you see which is healthy fruits nuts and uh, mostly vegetables if we are hungry 10 times a day because we are active physically that's beautiful every time we are hungry it's okay to eat so this is the hunger scale heart patients they cannot be in the mindful eating range which is between 4 and 7 they need to explore deeper states of being hungry and they have found that it is okay with smiling and gratitude and drinking in of water to enter into this natural ketosis first few times they go to 2 or 1 but after 2 3 months many many heart patients tell me they don't feel that hungry anymore even if they don't go without food for a day or two because we don't want to go beyond 24 hours when they go for 20 or 24 hours without food they are able to easily enter into this natural ketosis metabolic switching and they are able to get enough energy to go through their day's work from their own fat reserves uh, this is nature's ability through the liver's uh, metabolism and producing enough ketones we haven't encouraged anybody to do calorie counts or ketone checking but all these are available tools to help you understand where your body is and how to slowly engage this process of going from 5 4 through 3 to 2 to 1 you can take months there is no rush but the smiling start today drinking adequate amount of water start tomorrow and this you can take weeks or even months to learn this metabolic switching the siddha diet plan was very simple 5000 years this has been around and what the says 2000 years ago in this uh, simple thing is only fill 50% of your stomach with food have 25% of your capacity of water then leave 25% free empty this is the ideal meal whatever meal you are choosing to have 25% water 25% nothing 50% food and we can force this on and uh, our friends and this was done 15 years ago and what these monkeys showed is both the monkey on the left and the right are same age they are old age about 
30 year old monkeys their life expectancy is only about 30 35 years this one looks its age whereas this one looks so much younger because of calorie restriction this took a 25% calorie restriction instead of the equivalent of three meals these monkeys had only two meals a day for a few years and they ended up being so much younger physically biologically heart wise blood pressure wise cancer risk and also the amount of jump every monkey jumps a few times a day just out of fun the monkeys that had lesser food ended up jumping way more so basically they were able to reverse aging through calorie restriction this is all done already and that's what was said by our siddhas several thousand years ago two meals a day is good for health one meal a day elevates consciousness so how do we manage our time optimally this is very very important so we all have only a certain amount of time in this world put in the most important things that matter to you the most because the things that distract us are easier like watching television like uh, spending time on social media and uh, other unimportant things so spend time with your family spend time in deciding what food goes into you things like very very basic things and then you will find that uh, other things will be able to find the required uh, space in your day and in your consciousness so this we discussed 5000 years ago what tolkapier said about our evolution and uvagai or our happiness and trust and ability to celebrate that was the highest consciousness that siddhas have encouraged us to explore anywhere everywhere every time in life and this is beautifully depicted in this movie that came out i think about only 5 10 years ago about the kung fu panda and the secret uh, of the scroll at the end of the day i shouldn't tell you the climax but the movie came out long long ago there is nothing real written in that scroll every everybody find uh, tries to find it in some material answer the reality is within us that is the message that was transmitted uh, in this book for several thousand years and this message comes directly from bodhidharma he took kung fu to china about 1500 years ago he says in your nature there is the buddha and the buddha is free free of planning free of all the cares that is the amount of freedom that he wants all of us to explore and he uh, taught chen in china that became zen in japan and even today kung fu is directly attributed to bodhidharma's uh, siddha teachings and this is a very good uh, friend of mine dr charles rison and what he shares is a cognition based compassion therapy through emory university and that program is now taken on throughout the western world and he attributes this to buddhist uh, teachings and he talks beautifully in his youtube videos about how cooperation has played such an important role in human history compared to competing he goes back 200000 years to tell us this so i invite you to look up his videos dr charles rison same concepts have been around again for 2000 years at least this is the most recent sangha literature where inna saida செய்தாரை ஒருத்தல் அவர் நானும் செய்து விடல் வள்ளுவர் சேஸ் த பெஸ்ட் லெசன் டு தோஸ் ஹூ ஹேவ் டன் ஹார்ம் டு அஸ் இஸ் டு ஷோ தம் கைண்ட்னஸ் டூ தௌசண்ட் இயர்ஸ் அகோ ஹவு டிட் இ கம் அப் வித் தி சிம்பிள் வே ஆஃப் ரிலேட்டிங் வித் அதர்ஸ் பட் மோஸ்ட் இம்பார்ட்டன்ட்லி ஆஃப் செல்ஃப் என்கொயரி ஆஃப் ரிலேட்டிங் வித் அவர் செல்ஸ் டு ஃபைண்ட் அவர் ஃப்ரீடம் இ சஜஸ் திஸ் மெத்தட் இஸ் இட் பாசிபிள் டு ஃபாலோ திஸ் i should have put a poll here asking how many people think this is possible why don't we uh, ask our people do you think this has been followed i'll go on with the slides i don't want to break the flow of this uh, presentation the answer is yes this siddha concept of tiruvalluvar was taken up by tolstoy and he wrote that in a letter to mahatma gandhi this tirukkural and that inspired gandhi to take up non violence has the core principle of his fight for freedom for india this core principle not only was against the british but it was also to unite the indian communities that are so many cultures and traditions that make up the indian subcontinent he was able to unite 
under this non-violence banner. So Tirukkural has shaped modern India through the father of our nation, Mahatma Gandhi. And in the West, we know that this has inspired Martin Luther King. To other countries, I go as a tourist, but to India, I come as a pilgrim. If this age is to survive, it must follow the way of love and non-violence that Gandhi so nobly illustrated in his life. So this is what Martin Luther King has uh, used as inspiration. And now our president says, I can think about Gandhi and Martin Luther King said about violence begetting violence and still be true to my job by asking myself the question whether we are confronted with a situation where some may be arguing for military action. Will this action result in America being safer or the most lives being saved? So what Siddha consciousness taught five, 10,000 years ago is most available only in the most recent Siddha writings. And Tirukkural is the most recent ones. The older ones are all disappeared because of uh, time. But that Tirukkural has directly inspired Gandhi. And now we can see how it translates to our modern thinking. And this Siddha consciousness is not theory. It is in mind-body connection that has been uh, encouraged throughout these 5,000 years as Bharatanatyam in Tamil Nadu. You still see this as Ogam, which is now present throughout the world as yoga, postures and other things. Adimurai, which is uh, now available as Kung Fu in China and meditation, Zen in Japan. All these things are still present till today. And this simple question, who am I, is self-inquiry. Nothing beyond that. Who asks this question? And the only reason to ask this question is to find that gratitude. There is really no other reason to find out any more about ourselves. And Ramana Maharishi teaches us this question so beautifully. The inquiry consists in retaining the mind and the self. Silence is the true teaching. Desirelessness is wisdom. Yeah, when we ask, who am I? The question will destroy all other thoughts and like the stick used to, to stir the fire, it itself gets destroyed. Then arises true self-realization. Desirelessness is with wisdom in itself. The two are not different. They are the same. Desirelessness is refraining from turning the mind towards outside objects. So this is my real invitation towards self-inquiry, finding yourself. And this we did through exercise last Monday, finding where we are. So I invite you to learn this simple process. Try to find for yourself higher BFIT scores and I'm happy to email more of how these things are measured. And this whole entire thing is timeless. It's beyond our economic and physical health issues, even beyond time. I think these things are timeless and it's still scientific, simple and directly meaningful in our day-to-day -day living. So we talked about how flow can be achieved through tennis or writing new music, but through gratitude and connecting with hunger, we can enter into a deeper flow that is bliss and uvagai directly in itself. So about 1800, something weird happened. We started making so much more money. And this is because of industrial revolution. Something more weird is happening. Only in the last few decades, I shouldn't say weird, I should say wonderful. The news says this problem, that problem, but this simple book I should, uh, is an amazing book that says in reality, the world is only getting richer, healthier, and poverty is being eradicated at a dramatically rapid pace. That's what we are showing here. In the last few decades, our world is getting so much better. This is the data that you can refer to for that. And this is, a summary of all the philosophies that have been put together in the last uh, several thousand years. It's a simple new book. And what this uh, easy read tells us is, yes, at the end of the day, the sun is also going to go out. Our sun is about 60% old. <laughs> so if the sun goes out, there is no life on this earth. So you, you can come to a negative conclusion out of everything. Self-inquiry leaves you feeling so much wonder and joy for the moment. So that future where in a million or a billion years, whenever our sun is going to go out, that fades in that perspective. And this Moverax paradox tells us the challenge. Conscious tasks like playing chess and picking the right stocks, the computer can learn. 
but simple things like walking recognizing face and smelling and celebrating life uh, the question dr pandey and dr radha pandey asked was can the computer after ai learn to give us a hug so that is very deep consciousness that's going to be extremely difficult for the computer to learn so that is the paradox uh, ai specialists are facing now but the present time ai is reached specialization in narrow tasks like winning a chess game but in the future it will reach general artificial intelligence where it is at the level of human beings and super ai very soon afterwards will be smarter than human beings so that's what we are talking as narrow artificial intelligence versus general and super intelligence which is machine becoming self conscious so that is what we are moving towards whether it's going to happen when it's going to happen some people say it's only one or two decades away so it may be well in our own lifetime that we will see this we don't know so this is another prediction by 2020 2045 we'll touch human level and then super intelligence within two three decades of that we may touch why do we make these uh, assumptions because of this reality this we know for sure life started long long ago but in lesser and lesser time exponentially lesser time we are able to evolve into more higher levels that siddhas have described as consciousness that we recognize now through darwin's evolution as homo sapiens and then within few hundred years we have become more uh, social city dwellers industrial revolution the computer came within another 10 years things may change so much faster than we can predict the uh, speed at which evolution happens is only logarithmically increasing that is alarming you could say or uh, fun to be alive in this day and age you can look at it both ways so this is the complicated evolutionary tree that uh, we have successfully navigated to come to where we are as human beings today you see us here and that if you compare with einstein and a very uh, dumb human being the difference is very very narrow because the ai is already getting smarter than the ant and it's going to cross the bird soon and then once it crosses the chimpanzee crossing a human being is going or the most intelligent human being is going to be within very very short time after that so that is the reality that is uh, facing us currently so this is a simple framework i will leave you with that sort of incorporates what i believe is uh, the gist of uh, our uh, heart for living program so in the x axis i am showing time going back this is the present moment going forward in the x axis in the y axis pleasure in the positive and pain in the negative so this is what is our consciousness we are conscious in time of our positive things and negative things for a short period so if we are more mindful we can increase our ability to Uh, accept pleasurable and painful experiences and we can be alive for more a period of time but unfortunately most human beings are filled with regret for their past and anxiety for their future we do have some gratitude and some fulfillment in this group we ran some surveys in the beginning of this four week session i would say our group is an exception to what uh, is a common understanding of the human condition this is a general understanding of the human situation where there is too much regret and too much anxiety but once we connect at a deeper level find that deeper consciousness uvagai the siddhas have talked about through hunger and gratitude through exercise and smiling through silence and self talk altruism and compassion then our energy directly goes up this is not related to logical thought process that's what i want to highlight and once that goes higher we can stay grateful we can stay fulfilled looking at our future so much more optimistically and in a scale of 1 to 10 that is where you get the score of 13 or 15 out of 10 so that is possible and it has been shown through our own five years of working with heart patients that this is not some theory but it is a reality so people may ask how do we multitask uh, in self inquiry there is no such word as snacking we have to wait to sit down for a dinner like that there is no word called multitasking pay your fullest possible attention to one thing that you are doing 
I may sound old fashioned, but that's what I, I request you to explore whether you can do one thing with your full commitment. So about this finish line, when will we reach this finish line? We are all running this rat race, but we have learned that this rat race is only there as long as we want to run. We have shown for several thousand years that bliss or uvagai can be reached not through books, but through experience, through exercise, through dance, through simple meditation, just sitting quietly. And this leads to the finish line, which we reached and we crossed as human beings, maybe about five or 10,000 years ago, when we overcame every other natural obstacle. That is when the finish line was overcome. Then why are we still running? We can stop that running and find that peace within ourselves today. That is what I'm inviting you to do through your own energy, through your own happiness, not because Anand asks you to stop running. Okay. And this equality you will perceive as your reality for everything. And beautifully, it was said in the beginning by Dr. Pandian that it is not that human beings are the highest life form. Every life form has so much value, even the small unicellular organisms. So that is the level of energy that we can reach as our own truth and our own reality. So this is another movie that's very beautiful. I want to invite all of you to watch this, How to Train Your Dragon. Our hero trains the dragon successfully. But you watch this movie with my request that the dragon is not outside. The dragon is your heart. It is your consciousness. And how to find that energy is such a beautiful exploration that we do through self-inquiry. So water, just like our logical mind, looks to flowing downwards. Whereas consciousness has all along, throughout, from the first form of life, has been flowing upwards. And this child is only going to be smarter than the current generation of human beings. And same way, AI also, if it becomes at some point self-conscious, smarter than human beings, at that level of consciousness, if we start off at the right step today, the AI will also start off with the highest possible awareness where everything is going to be a celebration. So the AI will not hurt us if it starts becoming that self-conscious of the value of life itself. So all these lectures, including today's discussions, we'll try to place it here at High Life Journey. And I want to thank so many collaborators uh, who have helped me in these last five years from behavioral psychologists, nutrition, exercise physiologists, basic science, SIDDHA providers, and our VAs, uh, whole health program, and uh, home rehab, Cody Murphy, and uh, nephrology colleagues, psychiatry, cardiology, fellows, my residents, collaborators, my dad and my sister who have joined us today and uh, machine learning colleagues, uh, Sharon and uh, Tiaga, you heard him today. He's helping us uh, with our website. So I thank all of you for helping us come to uh, where we are today in our self-inquiry. Thanks so much. Best wishes to all of you. Thank you so much, Dr. Chakalingam. That was an incredible presentation. We have a couple comments and questions in the chat, if you'd like to go over those as well. Excellent, let's do that. All right, the first one says, nature is nature, not kind or cruel. Kindness and cruelty, cruelty are human emotions which we wrongly attribute to nature. Nature is neutral, not kind or cruel. Beautifully said. It is our judgment that makes everything uh, this way or that way. Nature is just nature. Beautiful. We have another comment that says humans are nature too. Cruelty and kindness are not born outside of nature. Definitely. So that is where the tricky part comes. Because there is a consciousness, because of our logic, now there is time. Now there is logic. Now there is some cruelty or plenty of war and violence, all inequality, everything is part of our reality. We, should, we cannot and we should not deny it. But what I feel is through our self-inquiry, through our inner energy, definitely in the next five years, 10 years, the entire human race can find that trust. 
just like this corona virus it, it was not even existent 2 3 years ago now it has come all around the world and it is shaping our thought and our uh, consciousness and everything just like that this happiness will definitely have a chance and now there is a need earlier we had the luxury of the last 5000 years for that uh, bliss to slowly percolate but now there is this urgency not because of the covid pandemic but because of the ai uh, knocking on our door that once it becomes more intelligent we want to be there welcoming it as the next generation just like we welcome our children into our lives with that much trust we need to invite this same way we also had a couple students ask if you could add slides from sessions 1 3 and today to the documents page so if you're willing, you could email those to Jennifer so those could be added to the documents yes. page. Yes, yes. All these slides we are happy to share with our whole group. We are so glad that you came and listened to all these concepts. We definitely want you to have access to all this material at any time. And the recordings are also being made available, the lecture as well as the slides. Great, thank you. And then Mary Nagel also asked, did you say... CETA-C is taught at Mizzou? We've been doing this uh, Heartful Living course now for five years, formally for heart patients, when they have heart failure or heart attack and they're trying to get little uh, confidence to cope with their 20 illnesses and 18 medicines and six doctor's appointments. We want to give them that confidence. And that we've been calling it... Um, uh, home-based cardiac rehab, arm exercise cardiac rehab. We've used Zen concepts. But now that I'm learning more about Tamil culture, I realize all these can be attributed, credited to Siddha consciousness. So it's just different words. And now because of the COVID pandemic, all of this is being recorded. And uh, these recordings, thanks to Tiaga, we are trying to archive it and make it available. Just like Khan Academy has made... Uh, education from 12th, first grade to 12th grade free, like that, whatever we discuss, we are trying to make it freely available for anybody and everybody to access at any point in time at their convenience anywhere. So thanks to Tiaga, we are doing that through a uh, high life journey. And if you email me, I'm happy to share any slide sets from the past, but I've been discussing already with uh, Osher, Jennifer and Peyton, whether we could do this again. Uh, in fall. This is the first time we are doing elevating consciousness, but for the last 5-10 years, we are very comfortable teaching how patients can get uh, this elf inquiry to help their health. So we can do a hybrid of this and that. All these same slides, many of these 60% overlap you would have seen if you had attended the January-February series. So it's not like every time we come up with totally new material. A lot of this material is 5,000 years old, but I'm happy to bring this back again and again and add new fresh material as we go along. But uh, we want to do this uh, just like we've done it for six years. We want to keep doing these programs uh, forever. Great. And someone commented and said, absolutely marvelous lecture and series. You talked about multitasking. How can it be avoided in working women with young kids, work, home, and so many issues to manage in such a short time? We have all tried to manage only with multitasking. Yes, yes, that is very true. In reality, it is hard, but uh, if uh, we are trying to do the self-inquiry, uh, at least uh, you can try to allot, say, two or three hours in a day towards uh, dedicating to uh, that self-inquiry. And that self-inquiry doesn't need you to sit down or completely avoid all food. You can start it in simple ways where you, when you're spending time with your child, try to be fully engaged with the child. That is what we are saying. But uh, obviously, in day-to-day -day life, through most of your day, it may not be possible. Right now, uh, th this uh, Zen concepts, if you see, or Siddha concepts, you see, they're all trying to engage your full being in it. So even if you cannot do that throughout the 24 hours, if you can find, say, 20 minutes where you can uh, participate in running or uh, bicycling or uh, uh, playing tennis or uh, writing music, so something that involves the body also, that would be 
very very useful and then you will find that even in that multitasking which is uh, something that your efficiency will improve so much that you are able to focus on one task as much as it's needed because when we multitask there is very little room to gain happiness that is the reality it is just jobs being done when we focus fully that is where we can find this overgai or extreme happiness so that is directly related to that that's why i cannot sort of mince it and say okay it's okay to do it. try to find at least 30 minutes where you can do self inquiry through mono tasking sherry todd commented and said this class has been a highlight of my summer i read the searching for hunger book and integrated fasting in my life i am shocked at the results i have more energy and feel more at peace thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of this as a community college instructor I'm excited about implementing this information in my classes. Thank you. I could not have asked for a better uh, <laughs> comment because you've said you like the book and it makes sense to you and most importantly you want to take it as your message. So that is when this uh, AI will welcome us. We will welcome the AI and this synergy will go on. It is not in going to Mars within the next 5 years or going to the next star. We can go to the next 100 stars, but if we are not happy today in this moment and be grateful and connected and celebrate life the entire purpose is lost so i'm so glad uh, that i could connect with so many people through this program and uh, have this opportunity so we'll keep it to a few more quick comments before uh, we have to close up yes we have a comment that says there are actions we do to get them done results and there are actions we do to do them process the former is fine to multitask but we cannot enter flow for the latter this is wonderful so i have to cut and paste this and i have to discuss with ken sheldon he is helping me with trying to come up with scales for gratitude so this one point i really need to take it up because the western system of gratitude or flow measurement is a uh, 30 40 years old whereas our siddha systems are several thousand years old but they we don't have a scale to measure it but this i think is a beautiful answer to this multitasking question so thanks so much uh, would you like to ah this is yogesh who said that was that right would you like to talk yogesh and tell us a little more we have only another 2 3 minutes before our session winds up and jennifer will shut us out <laughs> uh i mean like uh... I mean like you you like you mentioned even when you're multitasking it is possible to be self aware and uh you know like when when you're in that moment everything slows down and you don't feel rushed you know everything it feels like you have infinite time uh so I mean it is possible to get to that level but I I do understand for us when we're starting in the process yeah you're going to have to you know pay your bill you have to go to the DMV I mean are you really going to be you know in flow for that probably not uh, to go get the mail to throw out the garbage but i think at some point it could it will happen where you know through practice we will get there but it's totally okay because a lot of a lot of things that we do is result based we just want to get them done for the result but um, that doesn't mean that in the future it won't be like that one zen saying i heard i don't remember it exactly but i can say before enlightenment he chopped wood and uh, made bread after enlightenment he still had to chop wood and make bread so that is the inner realization of uvage so that is a zen saying so i translated it in whatever words i could remember but that is exactly what the siddhas have said so many thousand years see they don't talk about uh, the egyptian pharaohs thought of uh, going in a boat in the river ever after inside the pyramid like that they just talk about living in the moment and celebrating life and finding that same fun in that task itself so that is that uh, gratitude that we move through life with so that uh, thanks yogi we'll definitely need your help when we discuss with ken sheldon to try and uh, measure this gratitude so we'll use your help for that yogi's background is psychology right do you want to tell us one quick minute about who you are not not really psychology i'm just uh, my major was philosophy i guess um uh, even but, better yeah. <laughs> i'm a, i'm just amateur just like everybody else and just trying to get through life thanks so much yogi for your uh, valuable suggestions any quick comments last Anand, one minute and small comment on a minute comment tell yes. it yes 
please please people want to hear your voice before they go otherwise no, they'll not tag on for everyone as long one cannot read my mind nobody can guess what you are thinking that will be there once you know that one can read the mind one can record the mind then artificial intelligence may be overtaking us because it is given to a individual as far as today and only request natural intelligence or artificial intelligence we are going fast in finding out any effective drugs to for covid luckily we were able to find that covid vaccine but a successful day will be when you are going to find a drug for the covid and more so upcoming any disease that you are going to face but the most important thing is as on has been stressing all the time self realization it will leave you happiness within you that will only create peaceful many of our people they give the happiness instead of knowing themselves give it as a remote to others that making and deciding your happiness with the remote control of others never do like that most important will be disappointed the most important thing i want to say is as a human we are all social animals we are all interconnected as you was correctly mentioning it should not be any competition it must be complementary of each other no individual that can live as a single individual it is not possible at all the most important what i want to say is any moment of your life as anand stressed very nicely every time that peace of mind over that happiness nothing will happen to your heart minimum for 100 years so never compromise your peace of mind and wherever you go please carry happiness with you and never leave the happiness and march forward then you cannot reach your goal what you are going to plan to do that so happiness is the background peace of mind is the most one most important one and i am really very important thing what he has been stressing if everyone follows what on the says today to be very honest we as a cardiologist will become jobless as what he is planning to and keep our society healthy and the wealthy never 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 compromise your happiness and what i'm going to say we can lose anything for happiness but never lose happiness for anything if a person feels that he has got everything he wants everything he gets nothing he wants nothing he gets everything so please remember happiness and peace of mind is the base of which he has been telling all the time different forms different ways everything and never compromise and carry happiness with you thank you very much anand for the excellent thing you have been doing greatest appreciation for the group and this message is communicated to more and more and give them more healthier and wealthier life thank you very much anand excellent thanks so much for joining us from india there any other quick suggestions questions we can finish it off with you have a lot of comments in the chat saying thank you so much for your incredible course and for how you embody what you teach especially in your smiles so thank you so much for this enlightening course and your presentations we've loved to have you at osher back again thank you dr chakalingam thank you thank you so please stay in touch uh, we'll announce hopefully another series pretty soon in the fall and uh, we'll keep working enjoying celebrating thank you thank you everyone payton you said that so well in thanking dr chakalingam i appreciate uh, we appreciate our mu interns most definitely dr chakalingam it's been a pleasure as always and thanks everyone um, we will have a fall semester that starts september 13th um, so I hope you have learned a little bit about Osher and what we do to keep brains active as we age. And um, Osher, O-S-H-E-R dot Missouri dot E-D-U is our website. So is that right? So as I'm saying it, it's sounding wrong. <laughs> yes, Osher dot Missouri dot E-D-U. Our email is also Osher at Missouri dot E-D-U, which is where my brain went. So doc Dr. Chakalingam. Hello, uh, Father Do Dr. Chakalingam, thank you uh, very much, and, and your mother, and uh, we look forward to seeing you back.
Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Thank Thanks you. so much. Good luck. Enjoy the summer ahead. Best I wishes. appreciate Jennifer and the team. Excellent job you are doing. My wife also joining with you all. Hello, Jennifer. Hello. Good to see you. Thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure to yeah, see you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice being with Have you. Have a good summer. We'll see you in fall. Very good. We'll meet soon. All yeah. the best. Thank you. Goodbye. Yeah, Same God, to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anand. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks so much.